Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to The Second Shelf and to, yes, you saw that correctly, a TBR video. <laughs> if you follow my channel, you know that I never do TBRs, actually. But I want to participate in Victober. Uh, I love this idea and it's for the seventh year, if you don't know, uh, Victober, Victorian literature, the whole month. Um, and I... Sometimes I read then a Victorian novel, but I I have the urge, even though I know I suck at readathons, I've said that multiple, multiple times, but it's a whole month. And so I might get into the groove of Victober. <laughs> anyway, I leave a link to the five hosts uh, and their announcement videos. Uh, it's been, I think it's been seven or eight years um, that the, the Victober takes place. And it was started uh, by Katie from um, Books and Things. By the way, she has uh, her first book out beginning of next year. So check out her channel. Uh, and if you want to support her, pre-order. It's, of course, a Victorian novel. <laughs> anyway, so Katie from Books and Things, then Kate from Kate Howe. Uh, let me see, Marissa from, uh, what's her channel name? B blatantly Bookish, that was it. Uh, Petra from Petra U and Ross from Scally Dandling um, about the books. So those are the five hosts for this year. Uh, there's also a Goodreads group. I will leave a link to that also in the description box. And there are five challenges. Each host has one challenge. Um, and I, like I said, I want to be part of it. So I'm going to do the, the prompts or challenges. Um, the first challenge is um, um, read Katie. I, I combined first and second challenge. So Katie and Kate, uh, one um, uh, was the challenge of a coming of age story. That's from Katie and Kate Howe, uh, who uh, is very much engaged in you know, about chronic illness because she has a chronic illness herself. So she has the prompt, a Victorian uh, novel uh, with chronic illness or disability uh, representation. And I chose this one, even though oh, the, the way it's printed is horrible. So I might still read it on ebook uh, if I can't get along with it. But it's a Dana Moloch Craig, A Noble Life. Um, but it's this, you know, this very um, bright white thing. It it re it reads like a an academic paper. But anyway, I've never read this particular Victorian author. Um, I think she's most famous for the book Hal Halifax, the Gentleman, which I obviously haven't read because I have never read this author. But this certainly has disability uh, representation. So it's about um, uh, the Earl of Cairnforth, uh, who inherits his title when he was just a baby. Um, but he is, as you can see from the picture, he has a disability. And then it's his story to overcome um, discrimination and the fact that a lot of people think it would be better if he just didn't survive. So I have no idea how the book goes, but I chose that for uh, to combine the two prompts, coming of age and disability representation. Um, then the next prompt is from, or challenge is from Marissa, uh, read a Victorian short story. And yes, this is not a Victorian book. Um, uh, this was a gift uh, from Kim, uh, middle of the book march, uh, her channel name. Of course, you're familiar with Kim. And she gifted me this book for my birthday because we have this project together that we want to read uh, female Irish authors. So this is an anthology of Irish women writers, short stories um, here edited by Sheenad Gleeson. And it starts, um, it's chronological, and it's not only contemporary, uh, but it starts with Maria Edgeworth, um, and then it has also um, uh, uh, some other older things, and I picked, which one did I pick? Uh, the Riddell, uh, exactly. Charlotte Riddell, Frank's Resolve. So that is a Victorian uh, short story, and we will 
Also, we, I mean, Kim and I will also buddy read this book starting uh, in in October. I'm not sure yet how we will do it because um, it has, I think, maybe 30 or 35, 30, I would say 30 short stories in it. So we'll see. We'll figure something out how we how we will uh, read this together, but I will read the Riddell short story for the prompt read a Victorian short story. And I don't know, I have some hairs like going all over the place. Um, then the next prompt is by Petra. Um, read a Victorian novel and watch a film adaptation. Mm, I had a hard not a hard time, but I didn't want to re-watch or re-read uh, like, you know, your typical uh, Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights. Uh, Wuthering Heights, the adaptations are horrible anyway. Um, so I picked Elizabeth Gaskell's uh, Cranford. Um, I heard mixed things about it. Yes, I know. I know if you're now shouting at the screen, this is not a good book. Some people love it some don't and it's not a movie adaptation uh, as so much as a series but it's Judy Dench so um i will uh try to watch the whole series when was this book published by the way 1853 and i really enjoyed uh the Gaskell novels that I previously read, North and South, um, and uh, uh, Wives and Daughters. North and South, I have to say, I struggled a bit with the dialect writing. I always do. That's because I'm not uh, a native. English is not my mother tongue. So when dialect is written out, uh, I have a hard time comprehending it, understanding it first of all, but also it doesn't mean really anything to me. Um, so North and South, I ended up uh, the the big portions of the dialogue that were in dialect. I listened to in on audio because then I have a more a better grasp of what it means. Uh, but um, I I don't think there is that much uh, dialect in this, and it's it the premise. You know this this village where they are mostly women. So yeah, I'm. I hope that I will be one of those who really likes this one. Um, and the last prompt is from Ross, uh, Scally Dandling about the books, uh, who for the first time I think is a co-host uh, with Victoba. And she says, read a Victorian poem, sh long or short. And I. For the longest time, I wanted to read something by uh, something. I mean, I wanted to read poems, poetry by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, and especially Aurora Lee or Lay. Oh, I forgot to check this. Let me know whether it's Lee or Lay, um, which is a, um, a really long poem about her life, more or less. That's what I understood. It's the foremost example of the mid-19th century poem of contemporary life. The social panorama of this verse novel extends from the slums of London to the upper class and includes a number of superb satirical portraits. So it's not only her life, it's more a broader picture. So it's a novel in verse, we would say now, even though I always think that's a contradictio, contradictio in terminus, isn't it? Novel is not in verse, but anyway. So I... Pick this, pick this one, and if I feel um, that this is just too much, um, that I'm not going to make it, um, then I, I also have um, a poetry collection by uh, Elizabeth uh, Barrett Browning, then I will just read one poem <laughs> by her. But I really hope uh, to be able to get to that, but it it um, I will take the whole of October to read this uh, because I'm slow with poetry anyway, as you know. I already mentioned that in the Sunday video, and if you follow me, you know that. And certainly, a whole novel in verse, yeah. But there's the option of just you know putting this aside and just reading one poem. And still complete the prompt. And then I bought. Um, oh, I, I. By the way, I these two I bought, and of course the first one uh, I already. I also bought the long gaze was a present, so I have this already because I said 
why am I mentioning this? Because on Sunday, when I filmed my book haul, I told you that the, I also bought books for Victober. So these three, and then there are two more. One was already on my uh, shelf, and the other one I bought, and they're both by Charlotte Bronte. Uh, the first one is The Professor, in this not very beautiful and somewhat battered <laughs> penguin classics. It's the story of William Crimsworth, who goes to Brussels to seek his fortune, falls in love with Francis, a school teacher and lace maker, and is himself pursued by Mademoiselle Reuter. Um, it has often been dismissed as a um, sort of a draft for Villette, you know, her one of her most famous novels about this school teacher uh, 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 who goes to uh, teach in a in a uh, uh, school in Brussels and then has various romantic involvements until she finds uh, the right one, so to speak. I don't want to spoil anything. But I want to complete um, the Bronte's work. And this is one that I haven't read yet. Um, by I mean, <laughs> it's easy to complete because most of them only wrote one or two books. Charlotte Bronte wrote more than one. So I have to read this one. And um, another one about two women, um, and that is Shirley. So I bought this one as well. I didn't have that. Um, I Let me first tell you what this is about. Um, a struggling manufacturer, Robert Moore, has introduced labor-saving machinery to his Yorkshire mill, arousing um, a ferment of unemployment and discontent among his workers. Doesn't that sound familiar? I mean, this is Victorian time, but yeah. So, Capitalism never changes. Uh, Robert considers marriage to the wealthy and independent Shirley Keldar to solve his financial woes, yet his heart lies with his cousin Caroline. So it's about mainly about these two women, Shirley and Caroline, um, quite uh, a big one. And this will be then, if I have completed uh, the Professor and Shirley, then I will have uh, read all of Bronte's, the Bronte sisters' work. Um, I had, that was published, completed during their lifetime and published during their lifetime, but because there's also this fragment called Emma, uh, a novel that Charlotte Bronte started just a month before she died, but I'm not going to include that. Uh, I want to rank my Bronte novels. I think I know already what my favorite will be, but you never know, maybe these two will change my mind, but I don't think so. But I want to have um, one of my plans for filming in October towards the end of the month is uh, a ranking of all the Bronte novels. And then I mean not only Charlotte, but the Bronte sisters. So uh, I will start with Shirley because it's really uh, big. Uh, and then uh, the professor, and I hope uh, to be able to complete it so that I can film the ranking, yes. Uh, and otherwise, I will do a George Eliot ranking. Oh, no, I still have to read one of her books as well, I think. Oh, well, anyway, we'll see how it goes. So this is the, the this is um, what I have for Victober, my plans for Victober. Uh, let me know whether you participate in Victober and uh, whether you do the challenges and what type of books you are planning on reading. I will also read an earlier novel uh, that is not Victober, Udolfo, uh, <laughs> uh, because I already planned that to buddy read, uh, to buddy read it with Terry. Um, but it's sort of in the, in, I think October is also spooky month or something because it's a gothic. I don't know why I'm even telling you this because <laughs> this is supposed to be a video about Victoba. <sighs> yes. So let me know whether you participate in Victoba and what you're planning to read if you participate. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, looking forward to all your comments about your Victoba reading or otherwise, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.